Well, damn, it's been a while since I've been in here. Welcome to Tessera's Nerf Room. Uh, yeah, it's been a little while since I posted anything on here. And, uh, yeah, the review format's just gonna go back to the way it was before, but keeping the first-person firing demos. But with that out of the way, yeah, um... I'm, I don't, I don't want to do this video, guys. I, I really don't. Because, like, you know, when I came back, I wanted to cover the infinite. I wanted to talk about this blaster. Because this is, like, a good one that I really like. And I've really been enjoying the infinite a lot. And it's totally not super offensive to a beloved, beautiful flywheel blaster that everyone knows and, like, everyone can appreciate. But no, I realized that if I covered the infinite... I was just going to get more requests to take a look at this abomination. Yeah, uh, this is bad. This is bad. You guys can click off this video. Yeah, I, I insist. Please click off this video. Uh, if you like the Strife, you are never going to be able to see it the same way ever again. Uh, really quick, there's actually a magazine that's supposed to come with this blaster, but I actually destroyed it just trying to get it to work because it kept jamming and jamming and jamming and jamming so much that eventually I threw it down and a single throw caused the clips to snap open and the spring to go flying out. And then it would not hold itself together at all, and I ended up having to throw it away because it was making a mess, and I couldn't keep the thing together long enough to even hold it up because the clips in the back would dislodge, and then the clips in the front would dislodge. And so, yeah, you're not going to be able to get the full experience of seeing this blaster with the included Black 10 Dart magazine in it. And I refuse to defile one of my other magazines, especially my precious Worker 22s, with this thing. I'm just going to be straight up with you guys right now. If you do not like my more angry reviews, leave this video right now. You don't need me to tell you. You don't need to watch this entire video for me to tell you that this thing sucks. I'm telling you right now, this thing sucks. So anybody who doesn't want to hear me complain, you can leave the video. For the rest of y'all, this is the Alpha Strike Flight. This is a 2020 release in the Alpha Strike series, marking it as one of the last releases in the entire series. I would like to point out that what I'm doing with it right here is the only positive thing you're going to hear me say about the blaster. It's really fun to flip. Now let's talk about absolutely everything else. This blaster is an unholy abomination that trashes the strife to the highest degree. Why? Because this blaster costs $25. It costs $20, but nowadays it's about $25, which is the exact same price as the original Elite Blue Strife came out back in 2012. So you are understanding this correctly. You are paying the same price for an original Strife for this. How does the quality stand up? Let's find out. But first I gotta get the batteries in. Stuff having battery door screws. No, 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 no. That's too expensive. We've gotta have this thin, cheap, brittle piece of freaking folding plastic that 100% is not going to just snap off one day and then render your blaster completely unusable because you are no longer able to access the battery door and close it properly. No, no, none whatsoever. Now that the batteries are in, we can start complaining. First, starting with the design. It almost looks really good. Honestly, I don't mind the majority of the design. I think that these sort of striping patterns on the blaster look pretty cool. The little details that it has around it make it look like some form of piece of machinery. It's not really a bad design, except for the landfill that they duct tape to it. They duct tape this stupid skeletonized stock on the back for absolutely no reason at all, other than to just waste space, because look at this. All this from here back is completely useless, completely pointless and this stupid butt chin foregrip that is the battery door because they couldn't put the batteries up here like they could with the strike why i don't know but they couldn't it was impossible too hard we gotta make it have a butt chin because yeah and now the blaster's front heavy 
So you can't hold it like a pistol like you could with the original Strife. You have to use this thing as a primary, which is so dumb because that was what made the Strife good in the first place. The ability to use it as a small single-handed pistol thing that you could even holster. You can holster the Strife. There are Strife holsters available on Etsy and they're really cool and I definitely recommend looking into those. But this design is made just to waste space. And it's so dumb, because, like, you have these details, like, these big holes in the shell and stuff, and stuff that seem like it's meant to reduce the cost and make it look as cheap as it is. But then you got stupid stuff like this! Why does that there? I, I don't understand! Let's get on to the ergonomics. This blaster features a main grip, a foregrip, a stock, and a cheek rest. The whole four-in-one package. Let's start with the main grip. It almost kind of vaguely is good. Like, it's honestly not the worst grip I've ever used. I've used way worse grips before. It's pretty smooth and filleted all the way around, and this sort of ribbing on the front gives a little bit of detail for your fingers to hold on to. Plus, this thumb troil in the back makes a lot of sense, and it fits pretty comfortably. So overall, the main grip isn't actually that bad. The foregrip is this giant brick thing here, and it's comfortable enough, I guess. I feel like these corners are way too sharp, so you really can't enjoy having your hand on this part of the foregrip. It just, it doesn't feel right. I would honestly rather hold it like this or just not have it there at all and be able to hold it like a pistol. But who, who cares about doing that? Honestly, for a foregrip, it's not the worst thing ever. And then we get to the stock. It's way too short. It's not even half as long as it should be. And it feels like crap for your wrist to touch because the whole thing's skeletonized. How does it feel to brace against your shoulder? It feels worse. <laughs> because the back of it has this ribbing on it and is completely flat. So there's no texturing for your shoulder whatsoever. It's just like this hard box that is digging into your shoulder. Like honestly, taking like a magazine and doing this is more comfortable than shouldering this blaster. And the cheek rest isn't any better because it's freaking skeletonized. So you have these sharp corners of plastic digging straight into your cheek. How is anybody supposed to hold this? How are you supposed to hold it? Like this? Okay, now I'm holding it like a heavy gunner blaster. It's a tiny strife thing. Why am I holding it like a heavy gunner blaster? How does this thing work? On an original strife, you would be able to just put the mag in, you wrap it up, you fire a dart at a time, and it feels natural to do that. And then you can just remove the magazine without even thinking about it but we're not talking about an original Strife. This blaster is a magazine-fed semi-automatic flywheel blaster. So you take your magazine and it doesn't fit in the mag well. <sighs> Screw it. Screw it. I think it's in far enough. Okay, yeah it is. Then you pull the world's worst rev trigger. And then you pull the world's worst firing trigger. And then you have to push your index finger forwards and really fight it to get the mag out. <laughs> there is so much wrong here. I'm not even going to start with the obvious problems. I'm gonna start with the problem of the fact that the magwell lock, you see there's a lock in there, prevents you from pulling the rev trigger unless there's a magazine in it. Or is there? If you push the rev trigger down with a competent amount of force, you can literally rev the blaster through the lock. The lock is made so badly that you can bypass it just by pushing on the rev trigger hard. And I can prove it. Yeah, I can pull the main trigger too. I can actuate the blaster. I can literally pull this off and stick my finger in there. The one thing you shouldn't be able to do with the Nerf Blaster, you can do with this one because there's literally nothing. There is nothing stopping you from doing that. The jam door comes flying right off and then is a pain to put back in for some reason and is made like absolute crap. The rev trigger has a lock that does not work. The main trigger also has a lock that does not work. And the magazines, well, it doesn't even know if the jam door is open or closed because they were too cheap to put a jam door lock in there. 
What is the point of having locks if the locks don't lock anything? I don't get it. Now let's talk about the obvious problems. The triggers on this blaster are horrifically bad. The rev trigger on this blaster is so squishy. It's so, so squishy. Oh my gosh. Like it almost kind of feels okay, but it feels like you're pulling the rev trigger through silly putty. It feels so incredibly gross to pull this trigger in. And that's not even going over the main trigger. Here, I, really quickly, let me just let me just do this really quick. There we go. Now I can rev the blaster because it's super easy. I don't need a screwdriver. The main trigger feels like you're pulling it through molasses. There's no lubricant on it whatsoever. Nothing. It feels scratchy and it feels wrong. It feels a little bit better when you actually have darts in it and are able to well, shoot darts out of it because I will say the performance is good. That's that's a first, the performance is actually good and it's got kind of a pop to it when you pull it in with darts, but it's still not even anywhere near the quality of just a basic freaking strife. Even a strife that's completely unmodified is so much better than this. And now we get to this one right there. If you guys think that y'all had it bad with the Elite 2.0 Phoenix or the Turbine, you have absolutely no idea what this thing is like. This plastic spring is so heavy and so stiff that putting the magazine in is hard. It is hard to put the mag in. Here's the mag release thing. Notice how it is really hard to get it out of the way to put the mag in. Notice how it's so difficult to get that in that you have to shove it super hard. And here's the kicker. <laughs> it's genuinely harder to put the mag in than to get the mag out. What? Ugh. Why is the mag release even there? I don't need to use it. I can just uh, pull the mags right out. And just to prove that that's not a lemon, here's a completely separate magazine. <laughs> Basically no resistance. It can't, you cannot make this up. You can't make this up. And even if you do push the mag release forward, it's not much better. It's still super stiff. The only thing the mag release is good for is pushing it in when you load a mag in to make it not super aggressive to put the mag in. Because you could just, you could just take it out. You don't even need to touch the mag release. My hand is all the way over here, completely separated from the mag release. Hasbro! This is inexcusably horrifically bad. This is so bad, it makes the Ultra One look good. It makes the Ultra One look like a Gen One Strife with IMRs in it and the thermistor removed and all the locks removed and lubrication added with an end strike barrel lug and a freaking regulator stock. What the hell? I don't even feel like setting up the firing course for this blaster because it doesn't deserve it. So instead what I'm going to do is load up a few mags, have them stationed around, and then just walk around the room shooting this blaster for the firing demo. You ready? Let's go. <sighs> oh my gosh. You, you know, I'm, I'm sorry if you guys were expecting more out of this, but I just can't be bothered to give this thing any more attention. <sighs> this, this thing sucks. Why am I even bothering? Yeah, uh... out my comrades you have served your time well just come on just run and hide run and escape Alrighty. okay 
just, just, just go there. Just go there. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. There. Yeah, we, we just won a nerf war with... <sighs> yeah. I, I hate the fact that I have to bring this up, but, uh... Th this was $30. And the Spectrum was 20 The Spectrum cost the same as this. I, the Spectrum, one of my least favorite flywheelers ever made, I would rather use that than this. I would rather use the Elite 2.0 Phoenix than this. I would rather give up the ability to ever use a Stripe ever again and force myself to only use stuff like this that Dart Zone makes, only Dart Zone's flywheelers for the rest of my life, than shoot the flight. The flight is the worst flywheeler I have ever had the displeasure of putting darts through on the range. I have used hundreds of flywheelers, hundreds of them, made by countless different companies. I've used Busby's flywheelers, like pretty much all of them. I've used most of Nerf's flywheelers, most of Dart Zone's flywheelers. I've even used Zuru's big flagship flywheeler. Every single one of them, every single one is better than the flight in some way, shape, or form. Even the older flywheelers that Busby made back in like 2005 and 2006 that used proprietary darts that you can't use anymore and had like little on and off switches so that you couldn't use a rev trigger. Those are so much better than stuff like the flight because you can take those apart, you can modify those blasters, and they're made out of stuff. The flight is nothing. It's $20 of nothing burgers. There is no value for your dollar. Why am I still holding the Thunderbolt? I should be holding this thing, but I don't want to hold this thing because I'd rather use the Thunderbolt. You're paying $20 to hold a yellow brick in your hand. You can get 5 million of these and then make the yellow brick road. And there would be no difference because the only thing that this thing is good at is being a doorstop to walk on. Why? Why did Hasbro make a flywheeler in the Alpha Strike series? Why did Hasbro make the Alpha Strike series in the first place? Like, there's no reason for them to make that series at all. The Alpha Strike series is literally nothing but garbage, 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 all the way to the end. From the very beginning to the end, there is not one blaster in Alpha Strike that is worth buying other than maybe the Hammer Storm, if you're really that desperate for a Hammer Shot that isn't the Hammer Shot, because you hate the Hammer Shot so much that you are that desperate to get a hammer storm. There you go, there's the good one. Everything else is bad, and this is the worst out of all of them. This blaster is so awful, so unusable, so atrocious, so insulting to every single other blaster ever. It's abysmal. It is comparable to things like the lock and load and the warden. The only reason that this thing is not getting the sledgehammer treatment two reasons. One, it works. So therefore, it is better than both the lock and load and the warden. And two, I still have yet to clean up the lock and load downstairs in the basement. So I don't want to add even more plastic waste to go on with that plastic waste. And technically, this blaster isn't as awful as those because there is something to like about it. It is an entry-level flywheeler that you can get. But I have to be straightforward with y'all. You're paying $20 for this, and you can pay the exact same amount of money to get a Dart Zone Spectrum. I don't like the Spectrum at all, but I will tell you that the Spectrum is millions of times more valuable than this blaster. And the Spectrum, you might actually enjoy. This thing, I don't think there's anyone anywhere in the world who thinks that this is a good blaster. Thank you for watching. Bye.